All right, so this this session we're going to go ahead and put in the code that will uh, take the request, the post request, and write the data to the database. Before we do that, we've got a bit of a problem here that I need to fix. I got a little bit ahead of myself here. So uh, where we put this class in the app code, you'll notice that the namespace came up as app code, and I want to fix that. So um, what we're going to do is just copy the the class out. So I'm copying everything from public class person persistence down to its closing curly brace. And then I'm going to delete this file. And I'm going to delete the folder. This is necessary because of the way the references work. So <clears throat> I don't want to get too hung up on this, but we'll add a new class. Again, it's person persistence. And then we'll replace that code right there with what I pasted. And then up here we need to put a couple of usings in. The models. And using my SQL. Data. All right. I apologize for kind of going off in the wrong direction there, but there that that needs that needed to be fixed in order to make sure that references work work correctly. All right, so now back over to our controller. We know that this is a post request and a post request in REST is asking us to create the resource. So the first thing we're going to need to do is get a person persistence instance. So person persistence equals new person persistence. And at that point, we are ready to do something like long ID because we know this thing is going to return. So ID is equal to save person passing in the per the value, which is in the instance of the person class there. And that should save the data to our database. So we're going to walk this in the debugger. So I'm going to set a breakpoint here. And we'll go ahead and run this. And while it's getting started, we're going to, we've got our, po we have a post request here ready to go. So um, we just put in the body of the request the data that we want to send in JSON format. Note the ID is not here because the database is going to put the ID in for us. So we'll just give it just a second here to get started. Still loading up here. All right, so we're ready to go now. So here we go with a post. I'm going to send that in. And now over here, we should be stopped in the debugger. Oops. So here we are in the debugger. And we're going to step into this code and walk through it. So make sure everything works right. Here's our, here's our SQL string. You'll notice that it's got the data coming from our web form and we'll execute that and it comes back and says that the ID is 8. So let's go look at our database real quick. We'll go ahead and let this run. Okay, so we posted, we've got back a no content of 204. We're going to fix that here in just a minute. All right, let's pull up the database and see if Jill Boyd got added. So 
So I've actually been playing around with this a lot. So you can see how the records got added. But here's Jill Boyd right here. This is the last one that was added and it has ID of 8. So all that worked correctly the way it was supposed to. Um, okay, so now when a post happens, um, we're supposed to be telling the client that the object was or the resource was actually created if that is in fact what happened. So what we're going to do here is fix our controller to do that. And the way we're going to do that is by doing a custom, well, it's not really custom, I guess you'd say, but we're going to actually send back a response. So right now, post is returning void. We want it to actually return an HTTP response message. Okay. And I'm getting a, an error because I haven't actually returned that value. So that's going to be the next thing that we do. So we know that the ID coming back here is um, the, the ID that's now in the database. So we'll, that'll just make sure our object is correct. And then what we're going to do now is go ahead and form an HTTP response message. One of these, this is the message going back to the client. So we're going to create a response calling the request object. And it is going to be HTTP status code and the status code that we want we said was created. Okay. And then we want to set a header up. The header should point to the location of the resource that was just created. So that's how a post is supposed to work. The response coming back is supposed to include the location of the new resource. Well, it's going to be a new UR, new URI, and we're going to take our request URL, request URI, sorry, and then we're going to format up, and then tag on the end of it. it needs to say person. slash, and we're going to fill a parameter in here. So that'll just be the ID. Okay. And that, and then we can return the response. Okay. All right. So, I'm going to take this breakpoint off and we'll run again. And here's our post. We'll change the name. We're dealing with some other data. Okay, so we're running. So we're going to go ahead and post this. So it's sending it. It's returned back. A 201 created this time. Perfect. And the cool thing is the location coming back in the header now says if you call local host API slash person slash nine, 
it'll go get that person and if we click on that 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 forms the request for us on a get let's send that to go get our data And that's all there is to it.